Hello friends, welcome to the part 3 of Crude Operations in AngularJS. In the part 2, we have implemented server-side controller, model and entity frameworks code first approach. In this part, we are going to create factory to interact with the server-side controller. We are also going to create our remaining partials and respective controllers and routes. Now there will be question in your mind why we want a factory. So basically in factory, we are going to have functions which will be interacting with the server-side like crude operating functions like add player, update player and delete player. So using factory we can implement separation of concern. So instead of having functions which are going to interact with the server side like the functions which are or code which involves issuing a get or post request. So we will be having this code in a separate functions in a factory and this factory we are going to inject it to the controller and then the controller will call this factory function. So basically we are implementing separation of concern using factory. So let's see through the application how we are going to do that. So in the part two, we have created the player controller and we have created following functions which are responsible for crude operations. And in the factory, we are going to create functions on the similar lines. And we are going to create our factory on the, in the same module where we have created our controllers so in order to create one so we have to use factory constructor then we have to name our factory so using this name we are going to use factory or we are going to inject in different modules then we have to specify the dependency so the de only dependency we are going to use is http service so using http service we are going to issue get and post request to the server side we are going to pass anonymous function to this function we are going to pass object of HTTP service and inside factory we are going to have uh, object or a variable and then finally we are going to return the same object from the factory and to this object we are going to add our desired functions so the first function we are going to add is get players from db and we are going to pass a function and then we are going to use the HTTP service object to issue a get request and we have to specify the URL where we want to issue the get request so our controller name is player and the JSON result method where we are going to issue the get request is this get players so we have to specify that and we are not going to pass any parameters and then we are going to return this promise to the function whoever is calling this get place from db now on the same lines we are going to have get player by id wherein we want a specific player based on its id so it is obvious that we are going to accept id parameter in our function and then we are going to use the get operation and we are going to issue get request on this method that is get player by id so let me update that and then we are going to pass a parameter so we have to specify params and then name of the parameter which should match with the one you are accepting in this function so that the model binding does its magic and populate this variable and then finally the value which is in id so our second function is also ready then we are going to have the function which will insert a player in the database that is add player and we are going to accept the object of player which with the properties and then using HTTP service we are going to post it to player controller and add player method what we are going to post the player object and then on success of this post we are going to have a callback function which will receive the response from the server side and then we are going to alert status property of response and on the similar lines we are going to have update player it will be exact same just we have to modify the name of the function and the function to which we are going to post the rest of the things remains the same and the last function we are going to have is delete player 
and it will be accepting one ID parameter so based on this ID it will delete the player from the database and we are going to post it to delete player function and we are going to pass ID parameter and the rest remains the same okay so our factory is done we have created our desired functions and now we can use this factory in our controller now before doing that we are going to add our partials so currently we have single partial that is player list so this partial will show grid like structure and on this page we are going to have a add player button on click of which we are going to render add player html and then we are going to have edit link on click of which we are going to render edit player.html so we have to add both of these html partials so let's do it do it so the first we are going to add add player let me remove the default markup and on this page for now we are going to have a header and then we are going to bind a message which we are going to set in our controller on the similar lines let me copy this and we are going to have edit player.html and let me modify its header so we are done with both of our HTMLs now we are going to create the controller respective to these HTMLs so let's do that so we are going to add a controller and we are going to name it as add player controller and then we are going to pass an anonymous function with scope as the parameter and then we are going to set message property on scope for add player we are going to say add player details similarly we are going to add one more controller and we are going to name it as update player or you can say let's say it's edit player controller all right and then similarly we are going to pass anonymous function with scope object as the parameter and then we are going to set message property on scope object saying update player details okay so we have created our controllers as well based on our partials now we are going to modify our route so currently we have route for the main player list page similarly we'll have two more routes for add player so when the route is add player we want routing to render add player html and use add player controller similarly when the route is edit player slash and we are also going to pass the id of the player which we want to edit then use edit player.html along with edit player controller so we have updated our routes as well based on the controller and the partial now let's see whether this routing is working or not by rendering different routes and checking the respective pages are rendering or not so the first route we have created is the default route the second we have add player so you can see add player view is getting rendered and the next is edit player and then we have to specify any dummy id for now i'm just passing two so you can see edit player is also getting rendered so now we are going to create a form so basically when we are going to click on add player it should redirect me to the add player page and on this page we should see a form wherein we can add details so we are going to create that form so let me go to add player.html and let me create a form and i'm going to name it as add player form 
and inside this form I'm going to have a tabular structure and then we are going to have fields like name and then we are going to provide a text box to enter the names yeah and then similarly we'll have the same structure for four three more fields that is name club country and age all right and now when i am going to post this form i also want these controls like name club country and age to be property on the scope so in order to do that i have to use ng model directive and i have to specify player dot name so i am using object structure here so when i use player dot name player dot club player dot country and player dot age so when this form will be posted to the controller then instead of accessing each property from the scope i'll access this player object so inside this player object all the values will be present so that is why i'm using player dot name and player dot etc so similarly i'll set ng model and i'll create property on scope object so i'll name it as club country and then in the final tr uh, I'm going to have td let me set its call span to 2 and I'm going to say I'm going to have an input type submit I'm going to set its value as alright so if I refresh my view you can see a form is being rendered so currently we are not going to post it we are just going to create the markup we are doing the posting thing in the next video similarly we are going to copy this form and we are going to have the same form in the edit player just that we are going to show the pre-populated values based on what player you are editing and we are going to have a different form that is so we are going to change its name so the rest of the things remains the same so if we go to edit player you can see the form here as well so for this form as well we are going to do the wiring in the next video so as per this video we have created a factory we have created partials and respective controllers and routes and we have also created forms on our add player and edit player view or the partial now in the next video we are going to wire up everything that is from the form and on click of submit we are going to post it to the controller from the controller we are going to call the factory and finally from the factory we are going to call our server side controller mvc controller and then to the database so thanks for watching this video